on the news tonight. Anambra State Government calls for collaborative efforts to end air pollution. Public opinion leaders at Ozio Modinani Lecture re-emphasized the need for the promotion of Igbo language and culture. Ted Fan Boss, Professor Bogoro sets up committee to address low level of research in Nigeria. And in foreign news, German ex-nurse who killed 85 of his patients convicted. Good evening and welcome to the news. I am Ifi Arono. Now the detail. The Anambra State Government has called for public cooperation towards achieving sustainable environment, especially as it concerns dealing with the challenge of air pollution in the state. In a press briefing to mark the World Environment Day 2019, the outgoing Commissioner for Environment, Architect Michael Kungfo, underlined the role of joint efforts towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals 13, 14 and 15. David Bokwasili was at the press briefing from where he filed in this report. The theme for this year's World Environmental Day is Beat Air Pollution, and with the recent report by the World Health Organization fingering Opoko and Onitsha cities with challenging air pollution indices, there seems to be a need to up the ante in the fight against air pollution. Addressing the press, the commissioner highlighted some of the sustainable waste management practices initiated since the inception of the present administration, including signing of different memoranda of understanding to actualize public-private engagement. He emphasized that there is need for every member of the public to take urgent steps that will conserve energy and reduce the level of gaseous substances released into the atmosphere. Because air pollution is one of the uh, contributions to uh, what we call climate change. And so His Excellency had established uh, a climate change desk which is aimed to create awareness on the causes of air pollution and its harmful effects on human health. On their part, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Dr. Manuel Okafo, and the Director of Environmental Health and Pollution Control in the Ministry, Mrs. Edith Ike, also revealed that they have put all strategies in place to revamp and make more effective the work of environmental officers. Earlier, as part of efforts to re-engineer waste management system in the state, the commissioner undertook a tour of Zec Industries Company Limited, where waste plastic bottles are recycled to manufacture trade used in plating hair and for some other home use. Taking the commissioner his entourage around the facility, the managing director of the company resident in war, Mr. Che de Ezeribe, explained that the company has a capacity of generating up to 8,600 of waste a year and could expand to over 20,000 very soon. He also shared ways it could partner with the state government. According to him, Zec Industries Company Limited is also working towards installing equipment that could make wicks and also use the plastic wastes to manufacture fabrics. We can take a 12 ton, 12 ton a day, which is about 720 to 740 per month. And in a year, we can be able to take out 8,600 to 9,000 plus ton for this first machine. We also expect our new machine to come in, which we can be able to be taking about 20 to 30 ton. Waste, a major challenge at the heart of air pollution, can only be addressed when everyone put their hands on deck to achieve better results. From Mbo, Idemle North local government area, I am David Okwase reporting, Fabius News. The Mietiala Cattle Breeders Association in the Southeast Geopolitical Zone has debunked the rumor trending on social media, which alleged that the group said that the Southeast will boil any moment from now due to their stubbornness. Chairman of the association, Alhaji Gidado Siddiqui, debunked the rumor while speaking to journalists shortly after performing the Eid al Fitri celebrations in Orca. Correspondent Ejika Abana reports. It would be recalled that a popular social media platform some days ago published the said statement in Abuja against the leadership of Mieti Alakatu Breeders Association of Nigeria. Al Haji Siddiqui, who stressed that the leadership of Mieti Ala is in good terms with Southeast governors and its people, appreciated governors of the Southeast states for accommodating them. 
adding that a working relationship exists among them. While describing the publication as mischievous, malicious, and misleading, he said that he is the Southeast chairman and not the leader of Mieti Alakatu Breeders Association, as quoted in the said publication, expressing optimism that the relationship existing between the governors of the Southeast and cattle breeders in the region will become better. Alhaji Siddiqui pledged their continued efforts towards greater harmonious environment for enhanced economic activities. The southeast zone of the Metia Lakatil Breeders Association of Nigeria, Magban, and her cattle heaters members, whom I serve as regional chairman, enjoy warm relationship with the governors. I wish to thank the governors of the southeast of Abia, Anambra, Ebony, Inugu, and Imo for their wonderful sense of accommodation as I pledge our continued efforts towards greater harmonious environment for thriving economic activities and better life. In Oka, EGK Abana, ABS News. Moving on, the new Commissioner for Youth Entrepreneurship and Creative Economy, Ms. Dafa Mumbanefo, has tasked Ndibo to join hands in promoting Igbo language, culture and tradition. The Anambra Youth Commissioner gave the advice during Ozio Modinani lecture series in Igbo language. Organized under the auspices of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, Mirama Communications, and Ozio Modinani Movement at Professor Kenneth DKE Library, Oka, our correspondent Emmanuel Chibata was there for the ABS and brings this report. The program, which has three series, including Promoting Igbo Culture, Standardization of Traditional Marriage, or Igbo Nkumai, and Understanding Tradition, Igbo Spirituality, or Agu and Shimwadu, was tagged Kanyitualu, Asusu, Omenala, na Odinali Igbo. While speaking during the event, Commissioner Mbanefu underscored the need to enhance and revive Igbo language, culture, and tradition so that it will not go extinct. Adding that Governor Willow Biano is pleased in seeing that youth activities in the state blossoms. Uh, it's, it's something that we should all as Igbo people uh, and the Igbo um, put hands together to drive this sort of activity. Um, for all it takes, Igbo language is something that we will never allow to go extinct. In a speech, the director, Anambra State Library Board, Dr. Nkeshi Udeze, who spoke on the importance of library in promoting Igbo language, stated that library plays active role in cultural promotion and preservation through the acquisition of variety of information materials on the local culture and tradition of the people, as well as also record the cultural activities of the people which are stored and preserved for posterity. In another presentation, the traditional ruler of Ifitedunu, Igwe Dr. Emeka Iluno, and the Crown Prince of Akunubi Kingdom, Dr. Magjinja Ibeneme, whose message is centered on promoting traditional marriage for it to be certified like other forms of marriage, and the importance of Ibuanku rights in defining Ibuness in the computer age, stressed that couples should be given certificate of marriage during their traditional marriage. They argued that Igbo culture is one of the best and richest all over the world, but the anglicization by the colonial fathers did more harm than good. Earlier in the opening speeches, the managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Chief Ushemura, and the initiator of Ozioma Odinani, Mr. Chukubudike Ubuaja, who were the sponsors of the event, stressed that non-promotion of language is a common problem which is affecting both Igbo culture and tradition, adding that every community in Igbo land should embrace and promote Igbo language as it will help in the development of their culture. The inspiration behind this is the need for us to reinvent ourselves, to break ourselves from mental slavery. We feel that um, every nation that is moving forward in this world 
are those who have held on to their culture. Other speakers included the managing director, Anambra Newspapers and Printing Corporation, Sashuka Nabife, the treasurer, Oba Kordinani Worldwide, Chief Iken Nwachuku, the founder, Relief Pitch International, Enugu, Mrs. Shinemerem Anyi, and Prince Iforma Mebe Ojako, and many more. The event was capped with discussions on the most effective ways of reviving Igbo culture as well as drama and debate in Igbo language. In Oka, Emmanuel Shibata, ABS News. The Archbishop Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger and Anglican Bishop of Newi Diocese, Most Reverend Godwin of Allah, has called for immediate implementation of the new national minimum wage of 30,000 Naira as approved by the National Assembly and signed into law by President Muhammad Buhari. He made a call while presenting his address to delegates attending the third session of the 8th Synod of the Anglican Diocese of Newi, holding at St. Thomas Church, Otolo Newi. Our correspondent, Valentine Mbaduga, reports. Most Reverend Obala, who commended the federal government for approving the new minimum wage, expressed dissatisfaction with the seemingly delay in its implementation. The head of Anglican Church in Anambra State maintained that the call for the speedy implementation of the minimum wage has become necessary in order to alleviate the sufferings of the people. Most Reverend Obala, who also spoke on insecurity in the country, expressed concern that why the Fulani headsmen are allowed to move freely with sophisticated weapons like the AK-47, the local vigilante, has been disarmed by the police, calling for the needful to be done. Archbishop Obala used the opportunity to thank the people of Nnewi Diocese for the support to his 23 years of episcopacy since the synod is the last he will preside before his retirement in September. The Archbishop, while reflecting on the theme of the synod, steadfastness in God's service, called on Christians to be alive unto God's service as any labor in the Lord is not in vain. This day was a and Christians to take a firm stand in the face of economic and political instabilities of our time. It was a challenge to Christians to display their spiritual resilience and uncheckered rigidity at the site of religious provocations and persecutions. In the separate remark, the Anglican Bishop of Akadasis, Right Reverend Alexander Ibe Zim, and his Agwata counterpart, Right Reverend Samuel Ezofo, congratulated Archbishop Obala on his forthcoming retirement, noting that his commitment to the work of God is second to none. They prayed for a befitting successor who will continue in his selfless service as a minister of God. It is important that after laboring in the vineyard of the Lord, your ministry doesn't end here. The ministry must be heavenly minded, you know, it has to end somewhere. Our prayer is that God has kept him in good health all these years and he will continue to keep him in good health, himself, his wife and the family, um, so that he will see the fruit of his labor. Others who spoke at the event were the Chancellor of the Diocese, retired Justice Eugene Ubezono, the Clerical Synod Secretary of Nnewi Diocese, Venerable Roland Obikobe, a member of the Diocesan Council of Laity, Sir Humphrey Ngonade, called on Christians to avoid corrupt practices to enthrone a peaceful society. The Synod was attended by over 18 bishops, as well as the former Archbishop, Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger, Most Reverend Christian FOB. From Newi, Valentine Mbadoa, ABS News. Now, every community in Igbo land has one, two, or three marketplaces named after the four Igbo market days. It is either Eke Oye Afo Onfo. Well, some of these marketplaces in the communities are as old as the communities themselves, others are later day markets. One outstanding thing is that not all the markets are prominent. Blessing Ijedibia unveils a major feature of a Kelke market in the Demili North local government area. Ekuke is a household name when it comes to hinterland markets in the Addis of Anambra State. In the days of old, if you want to buy dog of any size, color, shape, or age, it was at Ekuke. The market became so popular and synonymous with dogs that people even began to refer to local dogs as Ekuke. All that are now in the past as the market has yet taken up its popularity in yet another livestock known as dwarf goat. A visit to Ekuke market reversed just by the entrance, a section where Africa 
African drug goods and rams of different breeds are sold. The livestock ranges from the young ones that are mainly for rearing to the big and mature ones. A seller, Mrs. Isisema Chikese, said the ones for rearing cost between six to 8,000 naira, while the mature big ones sell at the rate of 15,000 to 30,000 naira. Others in the goat market, including Mr. Peter Orakute and Mr. Obiajulu, said the Kuke goat market is a perfect place for buying and selling. From the Demi local government, some go to the north to buy and bring here. Some of the goats come from this town. Blessing Ijedibia, ABS News. You're still watching evening news on ABS television. Still ahead, Tetfan boss Professor Bogoro sets up committee to address low level of research in Nigeria. And in foreign news, German ex-nurse who killed 85 of his patients convicted. The news returns after this break. The great Omaul for Christ Crusade presents Omaul Divine Project 2019. Theme, total reparation with Reverend Dr. Mopai. This night, there shall be a reconciliation between your bones and your nerves and your muscles. Featuring salvation, healing, deliverance, divine breakthrough, breaking of courses and many others. Date, Friday 7th June to Sunday 9th June 2019. Venue, Eba Avuja, beside Union Secondary School Field, Omawolo. Time, 4 p.m. Delhi. Ministering, Reverend Gospawa Naso. Guest artist, Evangelist Samuel Anya. Host and convener, His Royal Majesty, Iwe Dr. Joel Mada Adichie Egwongu, Ezudo II of Omawolo. There will be free transportation to all locations. Come and be blessed. Announces, Evangelist Chris Okeke, JP, Crusade Coordinator, and Pastor Azubike Dinkala, Chairman. And planning committee. Everybody get back one. You're welcome back to evening news. Now to national matters at 0.02%, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TET Fund, has said the level of research and development infrastructure in Nigeria is unacceptably low. It said the situation requires urgent recalibration and resensitization of operations and policies that would encourage sustainable and innovative research. To this end, the Executive Secretary of TET Fund, Professor Suleiman Bogoro, said he has assembled a reputable ad hoc team that design and implement policies and programs that would improve the situation. He inaugurated the committee in Abuja today under the chairmanship of Professor Placid Njoko. He was unhappy that Nigeria has not accorded research the level of attention it needed. He disclosed that TED Fund has recently established a research and development department that will promote and coordinate research programs and policies. The Board of Trustees Bridgehead Traders Association, Onisha, is strategizing on measures to advance the development and ensure lasting peace in the market. Disclosing this after a meeting with stakeholders, the board restated commitment to working closely with the traders. We have details in this report. Briefing newsmen on their resolutions as contained in a communique issued at the end of their deliberations, Secretary of the Board, Mr. Chukwudi Ekweme, expressed willingness to reconcile aggrieved traders in the market, stressing the need to harmonize and conduct an inclusive Congress election that will represent the interests of the traders. Looking at the consent judgment of uh, 2014, we said that the next election must be a Congress election. We decided to call the traders so that we can sit down and harmonize. And uh, from the today's meeting, the outcome of today's meeting, we are now convinced that the traders really want a Congress election. The chairman of the board, Mr. Meki Lonze, observed that the meeting with stakeholders was born by the need to champion a cause in resolving the challenges confronting the leadership of the market. I'm very grateful and give glory to God because we, the board of trustees, what we are here for is to make peace for the entire traders. We are not happy 
that there's no peace. Underscoring peace as a panacea for sustainable development, the leader of the committee, Sir Peter Okala, in a speech called for a holistic look on the subject matter, appealing to the aggrieved to shift their sword for the market to forge ahead. He called for the withdrawal and settlement of all litigations, expressing readiness for dialogue. He noted that far-reaching resolutions have been initiated to include auditing of the accounts of the previous administration, which reference to recovering the association's property under their custody, among others. Other areas that address were the issuance of fake receipts and payment of storage fees made in the market. Business news is brought to you courtesy of Ezebo Microfinance Bank Limited, formerly Umudioka Community Bank, Afigo Market, Umudioka. We bridge the gap. And in foreign news, a former nurse has been convicted of murdering 85 patients at two hospitals in northern Germany and handed a life sentence. Judge Sebastian Boerman described Niels Hogel's killing spree as incomprehensible. Hogel, who is already serving life for two murders, administered lethal doses of heart medication to people in his care between 1999 and 2005. He is believed to be the most prolific killer in Germany's murder history. Prosecutors said he attacked patients in order to impress colleagues by subsequently trying to revive them. A former colleague told the German newspaper Bild that Hogel was nicknamed Resuscitation Rambo because of the way he pushed everyone else aside when patients needed to be resuscitated. On the last day of his trial, Hoggle, who is 42 years old, asked the families of his victims for forgiveness for his horrible acts. And finally, sports news. A 26-man delegation of Zimbabwe team are on their way to Nigeria aboard a South African Airways flight ahead of tomorrow's pre-Afghan sent forth international friendly with the Super Eagles. The Warriors will spend this night in Lagos and fly to Asaba tomorrow morning. Also, tomorrow evening, the Warriors will hold their official training session at the Stephen Keshi Stadium, venue of Saturday's encounter that begins at 6 p.m. Zimbabwe will campaign in Group A of the 32nd Africa Cup of Nations finals, taking place in Egypt from 31st of June to the 19th of July, alongside host nation Egypt. Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda. Nigeria is the seeded team in Group B that also has Burundi, Guinea and Madagascar. The Warriors will kick off the tournament against host Egypt at the Cairo Stadium on the 9th of 21st June. And that's even news at this time. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page and that's at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com slash ABS Radio TV online. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website and that's www.absradiotv.com. And now the main points again. Anambra State Government has called for collaborative efforts to end air pollution. Public opinion leaders at Ozioma Odinani Lecture have re-emphasized the need for the promotion of Igbo language and culture. Ted Fund boss Professor Bogoro has set up committee to address low level of research in Nigeria. And in foreign news, a German ex-nurse who killed 85 of his patients has been convicted. That's the news at this time. Thanks for watching. I am Ifi Aronu. Good night.